on respect. And there are many types of respect. I can respect the natural world around me. I can respect other people. But for right now, I'm going to focus on respecting myself. At the core of any type of respect is a vision of love. When I truly respect something, I care about it deeply. And at the depths of this care, there is the feeling that that thing that I care for is absolutely precious and valuable. Too often I think of myself as just a mundane physical being and I think only of my external world. But I take a few moments to go inside myself and sense the spirit the essence of peace within my physical body. This soul dwells in the center of the forehead and I relax and let go into a stillness that is untouched by anything of the external world. In my mind, I travel beyond the physical to a dimension of silence, a place beyond even the sound of a thought, where it is truly as if I am bathing in the light of peace. This is the home of the soul. When I take my mind here, I can let go of the external and experience the precious beauty of my internal world. I let go into that peace and I allow waves of this still light to bathe my entire being. In this piece it's easy to see that I am only an actor playing roles. I take many costumes and bodies and I travel through the physical dimension. But my true nature is a soul, a spark of light. I am a traveler through time. And within me are enormous powers that I have forgotten power to love, the power to transform my external environments with pure thoughts. I am an enormously powerful being of light, a child of the Supreme Being. When I remember how precious I truly am, and I can carry this awareness in the physical world. And instead of being a mundane world, the world becomes a magical place to live. And this respect for myself changes my interaction with nature and the world around me. To truly respect myself and anything else, I only need to develop the eyes to see how precious I truly am. Good afternoon, everyone. Om Shanti, greetings of peace. A very warm welcome to Brahmakumari Silicon Valley in the new series starting in the month of July, Healing Relationships. 
And uh, this particular month, we will focus on, as the topic uh, indicates, how do we improve, enhance, grow our relationships, whether it is with friends, family, at work, or with ourselves. We will, every class, we will focus on different dimensions and uh, come up with different ideas to heal relationships. And each class will basically give you a bunch of miraculous uh, formulas to improve your relationships. And these formulas can be applied in any relationship, whether it is at work or, to, or at home. And you will see a big change in the way you relate to others. Relationships are what make us, the human beings, warm-hearted. Without that, we are just, you know, a disjointed uh, bunch of group, right? We are not connected at all. It's the relationship that may brings out the best in us. And indeed, there are many different elements and attributes that are needed to build strong and deep relationships, deep bonds. And in this class, we expose that to you as to what are those attributes that are needed. And uh, we will talk about also all the problems that occur in relationships and what is the root cause of those problems? How do we get around it, right? So it's all focusing on relationships. As always, your questions and uh, comments throughout the class are very welcome through the chat. But in the end, uh, we will uh, let you also unmute and speak up, share your experience or ask your questions. Um, and just to kind of get the flow of the class going, we don't uh, kind of open it up uh, for uh, speaking up in between. But towards the end, we'll certainly space save more time for question and answers. And uh, as always, the format of the series, we will start uh, get started with a guided meditation and then get into the topic itself. Um, so request you to all kindly join me in this uh, guided meditation. The intention of this meditation is to awaken my heart when the heart is awakened my life becomes enriched warm beautiful sweet and when the heart is sleeping, unhealthy, life is miserable. With that powerful intention, let's withdraw our attention from everything external and guide our mind to step inwards. Loosen your muscles, relax your body, keep your back straight if possible, and your body still if possible. And then take few deep breaths and let go of everything. It's as if somebody is sucking away every little negativity from you. And breathe in fresh air of positivity.
heart is the central part of our being, the core of my existence. It is where all the feelings, the virtues reside. It's not the physical heart that pumps blood. It's the heart of the soul. What causes my heart to go to sleep? What do we mean by the heart going to sleep? Heart is where we experience love. Love could be appreciation, could be respect, could be gratitude. These feelings are deep and they are experienced in the heart. But when we don't experience love in the heart, then it is selfish love where the head is calculating the benefit the self will get from that relationship. And we know that such a relationship does not last. Heart is also the place where we experience happiness. These two important treasures, love and happiness are part of the heart. So when heart is sleeping, I, the soul, is not experiencing love or happiness. It's like the body is unable to breathe. What would be the state of the body that cannot breathe? That is how the soul feels. It's living. But it is as good as being dead. Because it doesn't have love. Or happiness. The heart is sick. And then we start creating desires. The heart starts creating desires. It gets attracted to things, people, hoping that once I possess this, then I will be happy. Then I will receive love. And the more desires the heart creates, the emptier it feels because these desires only give momentary experience to the soul. Anything that makes the soul influenced or dependent on others or objects cannot give it true deep happiness because I lose my respect when I am influenced, when I am attracted, when I am subjugated to someone else or something else. So what do I do when my heart is empty and is not experiencing the love, the happiness? I need to connect to the comforter of hearts, the one and only one, the Supreme, who's the ocean of joy, 
ocean of love. He restores the respect that I should have for myself. He gives me a true introduction of who I am. He can unconditionally accepts the current me because he knows that as I, the soul, goes through the journey of life and death, I forget myself. He looks at me with his elevated vision and tells me that I am an exact replica of him. I'm an elevated soul, child of God, whose heart is merciful, whose heart is joyful, whose heart is courageous. And my heart starts beating again. It starts accepting the true respect it receives, the true selfless love it receives from the Supreme. And when the soul starts experiencing love for itself, it can't help but share this love with others. And that is when I, the soul, realize that the only way for me to keep my heart awakened with love is to share love, to give love selflessly, altruistically generously, big-heartedly. I am the child of ocean of love. I have to give love. Nobody should be deprived of love. Everybody deserves respect, pure love. So love is the only way to keep my heart awakened. Where there is love, there is power, there is happiness, there is meaning. I'm a loveful soul. A very warm welcome to everyone. Healing Relationships, class number one. Today we will focus on healing relationship with the self. That's the first and the most important relationship that we need to heal before we can start working on our family members, our friends, our colleagues, and everyone else. So let's get started with this. Uh, let's start with a very simple question. Um, how would you define relationship? Would love to hear your responses on the chat. How would you define relationships? Harmonious and loving, it's a connection, yes. Connection with self or others. Well said, yes. Bond. People you love and care for each other. Interaction with other souls. Sharing.
it's basically like all of you said, join or bond between two people or myself. Yes. It's the way in which beings are connected to each other or they work together or the way they behave with each other. All of these things become part of a relationship. And how, how would you define healing? What does healing mean to you? What does healing mean? Restoration. Yes, that's the right word. And restoration means it's kind of like returning back, returning back to your good health, returning back to your good and normal state, healthy state. That is what healing primarily means. And if you Google it up, this is one of the things improving. Yes. It's a process of restoration or becoming sound or healthy again. Yes, make it loving or healing means no hurt. Very true. It's devoid of any kind of pain or negativity. That is what healing means. And in order to, let's not focus on the self or anything. In order to, heal any kind of relationships or to have some good relationships, healthy relationships, what are some ingredients you need? Love, yes. What are some other ingredients? Love is indeed fundamental, foundational. Healing does often involve pain. Yeah. Relationships can be painful, right? Unfortunately, many of the relationships can be painful. And there's so many uh, agencies, people who work as healers. And all they do is they listen to people and they try to heal them. It, all these therapists, what is their job? To heal people, right? And most of this heartbreaks that have occurred are in relationships. It could be from a friend. It could be from family member. It could be from colleagues, manager, anyone. And so all these are great respect, sharing, care, caring, patience, empathy, understanding and knowledge of God. Very true. So I can serve others. Very true. So there are many, many ingredients and a uh, lot of the ones that you've already mentioned are very important. In addition, faith is a key component that is needed. Uh, faith in each other. When you are trying to heal relationship, you can't really become a healthy relationship unless there is faith in each other. That you've accepted each other the way you are. It is really humility that enables us to accept. If I have this airs that I am not good enough or I'm too good, then that relationship can never be healed. If you have this feeling of superiority or inferiority, acceptance will not occur. Where there is no acceptance, it's an indication. Humility is not there. There is either the ego that is high self-esteem or ego that is the low self-esteem. Respect, which is love, pure love for each other. Doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what you do, how you look. I respect you for being a human being. Also in a relationship, you want empowerment. Wherever the relationship is trying to bind you, to imprison you, to control you, such kind of a relationship will never ever be healthy. Right? We've all seen that where this obsessive love, possessive love, this kind of things is like glorified in a lot of, uh, you know, movies and shows. A lot of glorification on obsessive and super controlling and getting very jealous and all of that. But that kind of love indicates a lot of selfishness. It's as if, you know, it's my cup of uh, coffee or it's my cookie and I can't share it with anyone. You're literally teach, treating a person as an object, I can't share you with anyone. As if this person, if they share their love with everyone, some love will be lessened for me. When we look at love also as an object, that is when this kind of insecurity occurs. 
love is not so it is subtle it can't be measured it is unlimited but we make it limited by saying i can't let you love anyone else and that's why siblings feel jealousy when they feel they want the parents love all for themselves and if they see little bit of love going to the other sibling they feel very very insecure honesty again related to being completely transparent so that we can build trust on each other where there is healthy relationship you will want to spend good time with each other um and uh, so faith what faith really means is that you know that you never give up on each other you maintain faith in the goodness of each other and so it's possible that you know maybe in a relationship you've tried few times and somebody has maybe broken uh, the faith or the trust that you've had on this person so maybe as a result of that you kind of now maintain a distance in that relationship and say that you know what we need to kind of maintain this distance because you just don't seem to be honest and keep your word so i can't maintain faith on you but it doesn't mean i completely lose faith where in the goodness that they can change right so to have faith is always have this good wish that people have good intentions will will change for better and to never give up on them that is when a relationship can be healthy then open communication uh, you know where your communication is coming from the heart you're very clean in your communication you're not thinking and feeling something and saying something else but you are openly communicating and openly compassionately listening not trying to interrupt them not always having your own idea is the right idea but being very open to their idea too and then also having lot of fun that is these are some core ingredients patience i agree is also a very important aspect of good relationship now it is very crucial we are starting our uh, relationship series by healing relationship with the self why are we doing that why is it so important to heal the relationship with the self first what is the reason for that without it we can't heal other relationships that is very true but why can't we heal other relationships still we heal relationship with our own self what is the reason for it many of you have the chat on host and panelist maybe you can change it to everyone so that others can see your comments too and the reason we have to we can't heal other relationship is because we only give what we have very true so if i have pain if i have dislike then that is what i will transmit to others must understand ourselves before we can understand others so true i need to be my own friend first very true and the only one who knows the issues very true even our own parents cannot understand us like the way we can understand our own self you can't pour from an empty cup very true not have inner conflicts yes if you have inner conflicts that will certainly lead to outer conflicts with other people hurt people hurt other people so well said heal people can heal other people that's a very powerful quote right there very true and we've discussed this topic in previous series also if you've joined us and it's a very important thing because many people are not motivated enough to heal relationship with themselves most people want to heal relationship with the others but the best part of this you know you are one and you will have the closest relationship with yourself there is no one closer than you yourself and you will have the longest relationship with yourself right the moment you are aware you are someone who understands yourself you are starting to have a relationship so it's the longest and the closest relationship so it's very very um, 
miserable if i can't have a good relationship with the one who is the closest to me and who will always be with me right so that's the most important one and we the human souls even though we outwardly look different maybe outwardly have different personalities but at the core at the core level each one of us is very similar our needs are the same our intentions are pretty much the same they've gotten soiled for sure but deep down the purity of the soul exists so if i do the work of understanding what are my needs how do i go about healing myself how do i secure myself how do i protect myself once i have learned that magical formula of fixing myself fixing the relationship with myself it's the same formula i get to apply to others but if i spend my time trying to understand others fixing relationship with others i get so lost because i can never understand others they portray themselves to be what they are not everyone is wearing a mask nobody is portraying their real self because they don't know who they are so i get lost in trying to fix one and one by one each and every relationship and then we said oh man i'm trying to fix this one and then this relationship gets broken i try to work on this and the other one gets broken so here at brahma kumaris we are taught heal the relationship with yourself know yourself have a very fun loving relationship respectful hopeful faithful relationship with yourself then automatically all the other relationship will improve and we basically relate to others the way we relate to ourselves so if i am very critical of myself if i am very um, you know um disrespectful towards myself i would be the same way with others if i can't stand myself it will be very hard for me to have that kind of patience and uh, love for others too so once i have been able to satisfy myself become independent then i can easily come into relationship without any needs and want right now people come into relationship so that they can get something they want something all the relationships have become so selfish even parent and child unfortunately parents have such egoistic needs they want kids to fill fill their ego you be the best in academics you be very obedient then i feel great as a parent right so it's all become so selfish so the one who learns to heal relationship with the self means what give the self un conditional selfless love pure powerful love so when my needs are met then when i come into relationship i'm only there to share to give i'm not coming to take anything from you imagine coming into relationships where everyone is only wanting to give that relationship is going to be ever healthy and when you have this kind of healthy relationship there's automatically lot of self esteem respect and confidence so principles of healing do want to mention this kind of uh, very quickly that uh, the basic rule of spirituality this is what we are taught in brahma kumaris is that the natural state of human being is of happiness and not of pain many people feel life or human souls are a mixture personality it is sometimes happiness and sometimes sadness that is not the case the original and eternal state of every human soul is happiness not suffering so similarly you would never call a body that is in pain or that is always going through one sickness or the other you will never call that body healthy body or normal body you will say man you need to show yourself to a doctor go to an expert go to another doctor till we feel that the body is healthy same way whenever we are feeling pain or when we are feeling miserable we have to call ourselves sick we can't call it normal 
everybody say oh it's a part and parcel of life oh sorrow you are miserable oh yeah i am miserable too you are stressed i am stressed too oh you are in pain and suffering me too we accept as if it is the norm it is not so one of the most important part of healing is for me to understand is healing is restoration back to the original healthy state it's not about you know fixing something or becoming something it is returning back i moved away due to spiritual amnesia due to ignorance i fell sick now i am returning back so it's not at all an impossible goal because every human soul has been in a very healthy state so for it to return back is very easy that is very important to understand otherwise healing is impossible if i think oh yeah for me i am too broken i have gone through too much i can never heal absolutely not it's a matter of a second the one who understands this in a second they can be healed that is how it has been for me not that i was broken or suffering a lot but whatever you know pain was there we all carried pain not just in this birth but multiple births for variety of different reasons silly reasons small reasons big reasons we've carried pain the heart of the soul is filled with lot of pain the one who starts understanding the principles of healing will immediately start healing it is that magical and powerful so what are some traits that hinder relationship with the self we talked about some key ingredients we talked about what relationship is we talked about what healing is given all of that what are some personality traits or behaviors if i have those they will destroy my relationship with my own self so what are those personality traits be kind to self yes that is true but what are those traits that will destroy relationship with myself being angry yes being jealous these are moving away moving me away from my happy state from my loving state lack of spiritual life yes perfection when we become perfectionist at times we become very critical self criticism being greedy yes not having boundaries from others yes getting influenced by others right and uh, so we should know how to have those boundaries people should understand that this is the boundary that megna has and they and they shouldn't dare to cross and if they are crossing i should know how to protect myself not having good support good friends not being able to say no yes inflated ego or deflated ego right both of them destroy us pessimism yes disheartenment not having enough courage being demotivated all of those are traits that destroy the relationship so having so if you think about right in any relationship think which relationship do you enjoy the most it will be someone that uh, that relationship where you receive lot of love selfless love respect cooperation where they will any time you ask them they're willing to help they're always encouraging they always maintain faith in you they're ready to give their time their energy their anything for you so those are the relationships which matter to you so similarly if i want to have a good relationship with myself means what i i take care of myself i respect myself i meet my needs you would never call a relationship that's destroying you 
or your respect or is taking away your happiness. You never want to be in that relationship. So if I, the soul, is doing certain things that is destroying my respect, so being critical of myself, am I respectful of myself? Or I'm constantly, uh, you know, having negative self-talk or I give up on myself or I give up on life or I have a lot of doubt on myself. This indicates the relationship with myself is very, very poor. So these traits, you know, like all of you have mostly mentioned these things and some others too, all of those are very, very damaging. So guilt is nothing but anger at yourself 24 by 7. At least if you have an angry family member, how long can they get angry? Maybe five hours, maybe 10 hours. But guilt is 24 by 7 anger at your own self. And we don't even realize the subconscious mind is constantly angry with myself for doing something or for not doing something. That could have been a decade ago, but till now, I'm angry at myself. I've not forgiven myself. So this kind of is very, very damaging. Guilt basically destroys the power of the soul. It destroys the esteem of the soul. If your esteem is destroyed, willpower is gone. Soul power is gone. There is no determination then. It will be such a disheartened way of living. So I have to ask myself, am I practicing guilt? It basically means I'm destroying the relationship with my own self. So very important. So what is the alternative? If I make a mistake, if I'm not supposed to be self-critical, if I'm not supposed to be guilty, what am I supposed to do? I, want, I would love to hear your responses. If guilt is not the way to respond to a mistake I made, okay, forgive. What else? Forgive means what? I made a mistake. Okay, I forgive myself. Yes, forgiving yourself. It's also very important. Guilt, not being guilt, let go of the past. Very true. Learn and forgive myself. Very There you go. Self-compassion, right? So I, it doesn't... So one extreme is guilt. The other extreme is carelessness, which says, so what? Everybody makes a mistake. I forgive myself. At least I'm better than 10 other people. At least I don't make big mistakes. So what if I made that mistake? To her is human. That is also not right. Carelessness is not okay. Guilt is also not okay. So in between what comes is accountability is there. I realized that my mistake was not good. I should be more careful. And if I ended up hurting someone or some work got destroyed because of my mistake, I'll go and apologize if, if appropriate. So that also I will do. But the first thing is I forgive myself and I sit with myself and create a plan on what can I do so that I don't make this mistake again. So it's not being careless. It is being careful, but at the same time, giving myself that power of faith that I can change. I can learn. I can improve. I can grow. Guilt takes away the power. So if the power is gone, how do I change? Power to change to change, power is needed and guilt destroys that power. Self-pity is another one. Here, I didn't make the mistake, but somebody else made the mistake. And I am very, very uh, sad about it. You know, how could they treat me like this? I've always respected them and this is how they treat me. If they can't praise me, at least they should not be critical of me. So this is basically leading a life of misery. Why? Because somebody didn't do something. Somebody didn't say something. So this entire life, I wait for others to treat me with respect, to give me happiness. And this is again destroying my relationship with the self because the core need of the soul is love, happiness, and respect. 
So any of my personality trait that destroys my core need means it's destroying my relationship with the self. Because in a relationship, you will never take away something that is precious to the other person. So happiness, love and respect are precious to me. And if I'm practicing self-pity or guilt, I'm destroying my need. And I am responsible for my core needs, not anybody else. And I love this, uh, learn the lesson and not repeat the mistake. Very well said for the guilt. Then another one is ego, which is basically based out of, you know, all the outward possessions, accomplishments and uh, titles and names and fames. And based on that, we end up comparing each other, whether it is the physical appearance or the accomplishments or the titles, and we feel either good or bad about ourselves. So whenever I am treating myself like an object, Am I a better object than that? Am I, am I iPhone better than the um, Google Android phone? It's, it's literally like that, you know, comparing, oh, is this, um, uh, you know, is this product better than the, that product? Oh, I, the product, I, the Apple iPhone is better than the Google Android phone. I feel good. Oh, no, something else has come out better than I, the Apple phone. I am not good enough. We can't treat ourselves like objects. We are not objects. We are not some physical things. We are not just this physical body. We are a beautiful spiritual energy that has so much to offer. It's unlimited. My potential is unlimited. I am sleeping to my potential and I'm thinking and treating myself like an object. So wherever there is this feeling good about the self due to comparison and then feeling low automatically, such kind of a personality trait, low self-esteem or high self-esteem destroys the relationship with the self. And then carelessness, we talked about this briefly. A careless person always compares themselves to someone who is behind them. They will never look ahead. They will only compare to people who are worse than them. And they will also follow people who are on the path of destruction. If somebody is jumping off the cliff, so what? I'll also jump. They're going to break their bones. I don't care about that. I'll just go ahead and do. Everybody's doing. So what even if I do it? But they're going to break their bones. I don't think a careless person, their intellect is destroyed. They don't think properly. So careless is not realizing self's value, wasting the self's resources like thoughts, time, finances, everything in a wasteful manner. So all of these kind of traits and the many others that you mentioned will destroy my relationship with the self. So as we are trying to build relationship with ourselves, it's also important to understand that what are the things that will break it away, right? So if we start filling a cup with love, and if I have some holes in that cup, then that cup will never get filled. So here I am in this path of spirituality where I'm trying to heal myself. But at the same time, I have holes of these personality traits, then I can never heal. How is feeling bad about other people's success in comparison due to ego? Yeah, this is jealousy, right? Ego leads to insecurity, constant insecurity. A lot of people say, wow, this person is so overconfident. I wish I could be like them. Look at them, super confident. Such a person is just a display inside they're constantly insecure i'm number one because subconsciously we know that i cannot be in the number position number one position forever so there's always this fear that today i am but i know in a year in two years i'll come down somebody else will go up who is that who's going above me so ego is followed with insecurity insecurity there is jealousy there is fear then Whoever I'm jealous of, I will hate them. I will plot. How do I bring them down? So all of these things automatically occur as a result of ego. 
ego is basically I myself don't have natural respect for myself. My respect is based on looking at others. Am I the iPhone better than the Google Android? So this is the way I feel good. Spirituality teaches us don't look at yourself superficially. Know yourself in depth and then feel that love for yourself for you are a unique and beautiful creation. Love your uniqueness, love your strengths. So the question comes, this is the important question and I see many of you have attended a lot of these series. So I'm going to go over this quickly and then we will save some time um, in a slide or two to understand, uh, you know, to take some questions or if you have any things that you would like to share, we'll do that as well. So who is the real self that's the most important? Because I'm not trying to heal Meghna. I'm not trying to heal Meghna the mother or Meghna the wife or Meghna the employee or Meghna the manager or Meghna the chef. I'm not trying to heal that Meghna, which is the role. But I am trying to heal the real person, the real me, who is the tiny point of light. This is just my skeleton, my costume made out of flesh, bone, and blood. But the real me is this tiny point of light, literally a dot. This is still quite big. Otherwise, we can't see it. And this is what makes me the human being. The costume plus the soul makes me the human being. So I am connected with matter. And I'm connected with everyone in this matter world. Yet I am distinct. I am separate from this matter world. It cannot influence me. When I see myself such a separate being, I've come to this physical world to play a part. In this physical world, everything is changing. The body goes through so much change, so much suffering, a lot of pain and diseases. But if I see myself separate from the body, the amount of pain you will feel will reduce significantly. And this is my personal experience many times. Even the suffering in relationships or at work or you have a lot of stress, the moment you see yourself as separate, just come to this world to play a role. That separation moving into your silent zone makes me uninfluenced. There could be trauma here but I could experience power. Doesn't mean I'm escaping or ignoring or I'm being insensitive. It means I'm trying to remain strong, separate from the changes that are occurring so that I can bring a positive influence on the suffering. If I start suffering, oh, the change in the body, change in relationship, change in nature, and I start suffering, then I cannot make a valuable contribution. So important to see myself as a separate being, then healing becomes a lot faster. Yes, the we will, we, oh, let me, I didn't start the record. I have the recording. Yes, we will share the recording with you all. We just didn't stream it today, but I will get it streamed um, so that uh, we can share the recording as well. And, um, home of the self this physical world is not my home it's a huge stage where i the soul has come to enact roles um, i am coming from the spiritual world this is nirvana the picture where these tiny dots are close to 8 billion souls and um, we have to come into the material world because there is no other way for the soul to express itself and Soul is an experiencer. It likes to express an experience. And that experience can only occur through the body and the sensory organs of the body. So it has to come down, agreed. And then we are spiritually extremely rich. Every virtue, every quality is already part of the soul. It is all laying dormant in the soul. The moment I maintain this conviction that I am a virtuous soul, I have patience in me, that virtue will awaken and it will start emerging 
and showing its color in my interactions. So I'm a very, very rich creation. I might have forgotten that I have these virtues, but they are not lost. They are still intact inside the soul. So ultimate healing of the soul occurs only when it connects to the spiritual healer. The spiritual healer is none other but the Supreme God himself. He's the only one who's the spiritual healer because he's the only one who never forgets. All the human souls are sleeping. Most of them sleep till the end. They never awaken to their truth because they always think of themselves as a physical being. They consider themselves to be an object. They get attracted to other objects. They treat others also like objects. So that's why we as humans cannot heal each other. The only healer is the spiritual source, God himself. And the one who experiences his unconditional love and acceptance, that soul is healed. It could be most extreme traumas in your life, but his love can completely heal you. And uh, for me, this is my own personal experience. There were quite a few ups and downs recently. And um, staying connected with him, sitting under his protection, umbrella of protection, I felt so safe and so loved and blessed. Otherwise, I could have gone through a lot of guilt or a lot of um, self-pity. Both of them could have occurred. But uh, because of him, I was able to keep myself healed. So the main reason we go into pain and suffering is when we lose our ability to love ourselves and when we give the responsibility to love myself to someone else and that someone else themselves need love. You know, someone who needs love cannot be the source of your love, right? They themselves are empty. They themselves are looking. And that is why the state of the world is full of pain. So God is the only one who doesn't need any healing. He can heal every soul. He has no needs. He is ever healed. So that is why when I am healed, then nobody can hurt me because God enables me to love myself unconditionally. So when I learn the art of loving and accepting myself, nobody's harsh words, no trauma in life can cause me pain. And this is such a magical and powerful experience. Very practical. Just want to finish this last slide. And then uh, we have, I think, one or two more. And we can cover that up in the next class um, or the upcoming classes. What is true relationship, right? Uh, we, for in order to have true relationships, it's very important to know the true self. Never treat yourself as a physical being or a physical object or just some, you know, person with these attributes, but treating yourself as a spiritual energy, the one who is fully rich and virtuous, very powerful, godlike being is who I am. And, and when I start living with that truth, and that actually I can do only when I'm connected to the truth because Supreme is the only one who's always leading that kind of life. And that is when the soul starts relating to everyone as equal. Right now we have this feeling of either superiority or inferiority or some differences or the other. But uh, those differences will not feel like differences at all. We'll be able to just accept them as if, and it won't even feel like I had to accept so much or I had to be so adjusting and accommodating. You won't feel that. And you will never feel yourself to be below someone, even though they might be CEO and you might just be an ordinary assistant. You won't feel that they are too good and I'm too ordinary. So true relationship means connecting to everyone, seeing everyone as equal. So actually, we didn't send the recording um, to YouTube uh, today. Uh, just forgot to stream it. But let me still share the link. Uh, it will show up there. 
uh, in a in two through three days. We will move it there to YouTube link, but I just didn't do it uh, right now. So I'll share that in a moment or so. Um, any but he would if anybody has any questions or if they would like to share anything related to this topic, please raise your hand and I can unmute. Or you can ask the question on the chat. So it'll be eventually it'll be moved here in uh, and the playlist will be called healing relationship. Um, and uh, so in two to three days, we will upload it there on the YouTube channel and uh, you'll see a new playlist called healing relationship. So you'll start seeing class number one, two, three, and so on. All right, looks like... Uh, so the question here is, do you think spending time in meditation is the best way to stay connected to God? Yes, but, uh, you know, to, we are taught that meditation is nothing but living the truth, you know, that always being aware of who you are, what your qualities are, never ever have an ordinary self or below ordinary self, you know, breathing or enacting or interacting. So that is meditation. So it's not, it's important to sit and meditate as well. That's important too. But it should be every moment should be a practice for me to, you know, have an interaction with the Supreme to say, what is his teaching? How is he like? Am I acting in accordance with Supreme and so on? So it's a constant interaction and changing. What is the path to connect with the divine? What things can we do? Um, so there is a Raj Yoga course that is being taught. It starts on July 15th, two weeks from now. Um, yeah, two weeks from now. So you could register for that. And that will basically uh, give you more ideas on how to uh, connect with the divine. Disagreement causes split in relationships. How can we heal such relationships, right? Now, uh, agree that disagreements can happen, right? Flexibility and being very accommodating is one of the core ingredients needed, right? For any relationships to be successful, flexibility is very important. And in any relationship, even one person is flexible then that relationship tends to do well and not flexible because I'm sacrificing or because, oh, well, I'm this great person who's always adjusting, not with that kind of an attitude, but being flexible because it is for the greater good cause. This relationship is important me, to me, so I adjust. But I don't adjust to the level where my truth is destroyed. You know, I could have some principles like maybe I believe in honesty or I believe in vegetarianism so doesn't mean um, you know i will agree to becoming a non vegetarian or i'll agree to cheating and lying that is not the agreement we want so yes in those cases we might disagree so someone might say hey lie for my sake lie i might say no i can't so i might disagree but in my heart i don't have any ill feelings for that person i'm not in disagreement with that person overall I understand they want something, right? So disagreement is okay as long as it is not based out of ego. Most of the times I should be in agreement. Any other questions or thoughts? And maybe we can talk about 
you know, disagreements in different um, relationships as they come by. Um, and then maybe it will become more clearer. Like we will be talking about healing relationship with the significant other, healing relationship with parents, healing relationships at work in the upcoming classes. So as we said, uh, as we go through all of these classes, hopefully more of these ideas become clearer. If you have a minute, please stay back for a short guided meditation. I look myself with lot of love and sincere respect and I embrace myself with warm feelings and I promise to never neglect myself to never ignore myself but to address whatever I am feeling when a relative is suffering we don't sit and watch a gadget or we don't distract ourselves with work we try to help out the relative it's the same way if I'm feeling low or if I'm feeling angry, I have to take care of myself. I have to help myself. I am responsible for myself. And I'm a beautiful creation. Why won't I give myself my own time? I deserve my time, my respect and my love. I'm a precious creation and I treat myself preciously. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll see you again next week at the same time. Hope you have a beautiful week ahead. Om Shanti.